Juno or Juno Beach was one of five beaches of the Allied invasion of German-occupied France in the Normandy landings on 6 June 1944. During the Second World War, the beach spanned from Corsal, a village just east of the British Beach Gold, to St. Albans sur mer just west of the British Beach Sword. Taking Juno was the responsibility of the 3rd Canadian Infantry Division, and commandos of the Royal Marines, all under the command of British 1st Corps, with support from Naval Force J, the Juno contingent of the invasion fleet, including the Royal Canadian Navy. The objectives of the 3rd Division on D-Day were to cut the conveyor road, seize the Carpacay Airport west of Con, and form a link between the two British beaches of gold and sword on either side of Juno Beach. The beach was defended by two battalions of the German 716th Infantry Division, with elements of the 21st Panzer Division held in reserve near Con. The invasion plan called for two brigades of the 3rd Canadian Division to land on two beach sectors, Mycombe Nan, focusing on Corsal, Berniers and St. Alban. It was hoped that the preliminary naval and air bombardments would soften up the beach defences and destroy coastal strong points. Close support on the beaches was to be provided by amphibious tanks of the 2nd Canadian Armoured Brigade. Once the landing zones were secured, the plan called for the 9th Canadian Infantry Brigade to land reserve battalions and deploy inland the Royal Marine Commandos to establish contact with the British 3rd Infantry Division on Sword Beach and the 7th Canadian Infantry Brigade to link up with the British 50th Infantry Division on Gold Beach. The 3rd Canadian Division's D-Day objectives were to capture Carpac Airfield and reach the Conveyor Railway Line by nightfall. The landings initially encountered heavy resistance from the German 716th Division. The preliminary bombardment proved less effective than had been hoped, and rough weather forced the first wave to be delayed until 7.35. Several assault companies, notably those of the Royal Winnipeg Rifles and the Queen's Own Rifles of Canada, took heavy casualties in the opening. Minutes of the first wave, strength of numbers, as well as coordinated fire support from artillery and armoured squadrons, cleared most of the coastal defences within two hours of landing. The reserves of the 7th and 8th Brigades began deploying at 8.30, while the 9th Brigade began its deployment at 11.40. The subsequent push inland towards Carpacay and the Conbeya railway line achieved mixed results. The sheer numbers of men and vehicles on the beaches created lengthy delays between the landing of the 9th Brigade and the beginning of substantive attacks to the south. The 7th Brigade encountered heavy initial opposition before pushing south and making contact with the 50th Infantry Division at Crowley. The 8th Brigade encountered heavy resistance from a battalion of the 716th at Tyville, while the 9th Brigade deployed towards Carpacay early in the evening. Resistance in St. Alban prevented the Royal Marines from establishing contact with the British 3rd Division on Sword. When all operations on the Anglo-Canadian front were ordered to halt at 2100, by which time the Queen's Own Rifles of Canada had reached its D-Day objective, and the 3rd Canadian Infantry Division had succeeded in pushing farther inland than any other landing force on D-Day. Background Invasion of Normandy in 1942 The Western Allies agreed to open a second front in Western Europe to take pressure off the beleaguered Red Army in the Soviet Union while Britain and the United States did not yet possess the resources to mount a full invasion. Invasion plans that came to be known as Operation Sledgehammer were drawn up, in case the German position in Western Europe weakened or the USSR's situation became dire. In August 1942 Anglo-Canadian forces attempted an abortive landing, Operation Jubilee, at the French port of Jeppe. The landing was designed to test the feasibility of a cross-channel invasion. The attack was poorly planned and ended in disaster. 4,963 soldiers were killed, wounded or captured. Following the Anglo-American victory against Field Marshal Erwin Rommel in North Africa in May 1943, British, 
American and Canadian troops invaded Sicily in July 1943, followed by Italy in September. By December the Allies' progress had slowed facing tenacious German resistance and the difficult geography of the Italian peninsula. After gaining valuable experience in amphibious assaults and inland fighting, Allied planners returned to the plans to invade northern France now postponed to 1944, under the direction of General Dwight D. Eisenhower and Frederick Morgan, plans for the invasion of France coalesced as Operation Overlord. With an initial target date of 1 May 1944, the infantry attack was conceived as a joint assault by five divisions transported by landing craft, constituting the largest amphibious operation in military history. The attack was later scheduled for Monday 5 June 1944, and Normandy was selected for the landing sites, with a zone of operations extending from the Cotentin Peninsula to Caen. There were originally 17 sectors along the Normandy coastline with code names taken from one of the speaking alphabets of the time, from Abel, west of Omaha, to Roger on the east flank of the invasion area. Eight further sectors were added when the planned invasion was extended to include Utah on the Cotentin Peninsula. Sectors were further subdivided into beaches identified by the colors green, red and white. Operation Overlord called for the British Second Army to assault between the river or an important basin, capture Caen, and form a front line from Cormont La Revente to the southeast of Caen, to acquire airfields and protect the left flank of the United States First Army while it captured Cherbourg. Possession of Con and its surroundings would give Second Army a suitable staging area for a push south to capture the city of Falaise which could then be used as a pivot for a swing left to advance on Argentan, the Touques River and then towards the River Seine. After delays due to both logistical difficulties and poor weather, the D-Day of Overlord, the largest amphibious operation ever, was postponed 24 hours to 6 June 1944. Eisenhower and Montgomery, commander of 21st Army Group, aimed to capture Con within the first day and liberate Paris within 90 days. Juno Operation Neptune, the landing phase of Overlord called for a five-division front spread across 50 miles of coastline. Three airborne divisions would also land in the pre-dawn hours of D-Day. Eisenhower and General Bernard Montgomery hoped to have eight infantry divisions and 14 tank regiments in the Normandy beachhead by nightfall. On D-Day, the landing zone was divided into five landing areas, with the Americans attacking Utah and Omaha, and the British attacking Gold and Sword. Juno, a six-mile stretch of shoreline between La Riviere to the west and St. Auburn to the east, was assigned to the 3rd Canadian Infantry Division, commanded by Major General Rodney Keller. Juno included the villages of Corsal and Berniers. The name Juno arose because Winston Churchill considered that the original code name Jelly sounded inappropriate. The code names for the beaches to be taken by British and Commonwealth forces were named after types of fish. Goldfish, swordfish and jellyfish, abbreviated to gold, sword and jelly. Churchill disapproved of the name jelly for a beach on which so many men might die. He insisted on a change to the more dignified name Juno. Planning and Preparation German defences while the German army had seen its strength and morale heavily depleted by campaigns in Russia, North Africa and Italy, it remained a powerful fighting force. Despite this, most of the German divisions along the French coast in late 1943 were composed of either new recruits or veteran units resting and rebuilding from the Eastern Front. Altogether some 856,000 soldiers were stationed in France, predominantly on the coast. An additional 60,000 Hilfswillage, USSR and Polish members of the German army served on the French coast. Under the command of Field Marshals Erwin Rommel and Gerd von Rundstedt, the defences of the Atlantic Wall, a line of coastal gun emplacements, 
machine gun nests, minefields and beach obstacles along the French coast, were increased. In the first six months of 1944, the Germans laid 1.2 million tons of steel and 17.3 million cubic yards of concrete. Rommel also surrounded the coast with 4 million anti-tank and anti-personnel mines and 500,000 beach obstacles. On Juno, the defenses of the Atlantic Wall were greater than at many other landing sectors. The Germans assumed that the Allies would land during high tide, to minimize the distance during which they would be exposed on the beaches and created a devil's garden to beach obstacles. Deployed in rows between 12 to 17 feet above the low tide mark, strong points of machine gun positions, anti-tank and anti-personnel artillery in bunkers were located every 1,000 yards, manned by several platoons with mortars. Minefields were deployed surrounding these strong points, and additional defenses were present in the Corsal Harbour. The Calvados beaches of Normandy were defended by the 716th Static and 352nd Infantry Divisions, with the Canadian landing zone defended by elements of the 716th. It was formed mostly from soldiers under 18 or over 35, comprising 7,771 combat troops in six battalions. While the 352nd was considered a first-rate division, the 716th was accounted a better-than-average static division. These divisions generally had very few vehicles or tanks and had to rely on infantry and field regiments. On Juno the division's 736th Grenadier Regiment deployed four infantry companies. 7 Company held what was to become Mike Sector, the 6th was stationed in Corsal, the 5th was at Berniers, and the 9th held Nan Sector and St. Auburn. A second line of four infantry companies and one Panzer Company was stationed one mile inland. The 21st Panzer Division was deployed southeast of Conn and two battalions of Polish and Russian conscripts were stationed on the flanks of Juno, adjacent to Sword and Gold. Canadian preparations Canadian training for D-Day had begun as early as July 1943, when Lieutenant General Andrew McNaughton of the 1st Canadian Army informed Harry Creeral, commander of 2nd Canadian Corps, that the 3rd Canadian Infantry Division might play a role in the invasion of France. Initial training was demanding, and complicated by the lack of any landing craft to practice with either LCAs or LCTs. Field exercises in Scotland commenced in August and September 1943, and succeeded in establishing unique techniques and equipment for use by armoured and artillery regiments in storming the beach. The most significant were the amphibious duplex drive tanks. Mechanisms were also developed to allow artillery to bombard the beach while still attached to their landing craft. Through the winter of 1943, units jointly developed more advanced assault tactics among the Juno regiments. The landings would be supported by the largest invasion fleet in history, 7,016 vessels in total. The Royal Canadian Navy contributed 121 vessels to the Armada, including destroyers, frigates, corvettes, landing ships, minesweepers and torpedo boats. Four Canadian tribal-class destroyers were in the Royal Navy's 10th destroyer flotilla, which joined other RN units in keeping the English Channel near Normandy clear of German naval units. Naval Force J had begun intense training for the invasion with the 3rd Canadian Infantry Division in February 1944, with a full-scale simulation of the invasion carried out on 4 May in Exercise Fabius. On D-Day itself, Force J, commanded from HMS Hillary, was to bombard German defensive positions along the landing zone with everything from heavy caliber cruiser guns to self-propelled artillery attached to landing craft. According to Canadian Army historian C. P. Stacy, a light bombardment of the landing zone would commence 30 minutes before a hour and continue for 15 minutes. Heavy bombing would then begin on the flanks of the divisional attack, lasting until a hour. 
Additional cover would be provided by Royal and Royal Canadian Air Force squadrons both before and on D-Day. A successful surprise invasion required total air superiority over the English Channel and Normandy. In the months preceding D-Day, the RAF 2nd Tactical Air Force attacked airfields, coastal garrisons, radar, railway lines and transport routes in order to soften the beach defences, as well as prevent the German Luftwaffe from mounting a serious challenge to air superiority over Normandy. By dawn, on 6 June, the RAF Tactical Air Forces had 2,434 fighter and fighter-bomber aircraft with approximately 700 light and medium bombers to support them. The operational plan for Juno was divided into two main sectors, Mike and Nan. Mike sector would be attacked by the 7th Canadian Infantry Brigade, with the Royal Winnipeg Rifles, the Canadian Scottish Regiment and the 1st Hussars in support. The 7th Brigade was to take Corsal and drive inland. Nan Sector would be assaulted by the Regina Rifle Regiment of 7th Brigade, as well as the North Shore Regiment and the Queen's Own Rifles of Canada of the 8th Canadian Infantry Brigade. While tanks of the Fort Garry Horse provided armoured support, a squadron of specialised AVRE engineering tanks from the British 79th Armoured Division would land on each beach sector as well. The 8th Brigade was to capture Berniers and the western edge of St. Aubin, then push south into Normandy. The operational plan also called for the 9th Canadian Infantry Brigade and the Sherbrooke Fusiliers to be deployed to Juneau as reinforcements within four to six hours of the initial assault. By nightfall of D-Day, the 3rd Canadian Infantry Division was slated to have captured the high ground west of Con, the Baycon railway line, and the seaside towns of Corsal, Berniers, St. Auburn and Bille-Cute-Noy-sur-Mer.